It is autumn once again in the hills of Hexham and our cannibal keep still stands unchallenged. And that isn't entirely true. There have been challenges, but none that have cost us a life as of yet. Or, well, at least, a life that we truly cherish. In the time since you've last visited Hexham, there have been a few changes. The ever-expanding pantry has expanded to allow for more bodies and the greater storage of meats. Lelion has unlocked the secrets of the apothecary, which is now situated in the corner of our kitchen. That will provide us with varying grades of first aid kits, just in case we get wounded. And outside the keep, we have started raising some additional walls, leaving only really one way for folks to be able to get in here. And you might also notice that we started mining, digging out the ground either side of the main path towards the base. Reason being, we're going to drop this whole thing down a little bit further, as I believe that will make it easier for our archers to hit people but we'll keep them restricted to that single path still. We have limestone ready by our sally port so that the next time we're attacked, we'll just break that on up. And the merlons that we had out the front have been removed for now. And under a little bit of cover here, we have a wandering merchant from the Church of the Third Coming, who, for the time being, we are allowing to live as I think going back and forth between our allegiances might be making the game a little bit easier than is intended. And so we will continue on here in Hexham, improving our quality of life and improving our chances to survive. However, that won't go on forever. There is a strong chance that this might be the last episode, at least for a little while. As you see, going medieval is an early access, and there are limits to how much we can experience at this stage. I am hoping that the difficulty will start to ramp up today, but for that, we'll have to let time pass on by. Oh, but before we get that time a-rolling, David must be dealt with. Kia ora, Legionnaires, Rykon here, and welcome back to Going Medieval. And yes, as you can see, David is rebellious terrible as it is. So we are going to be sending in both Edith and Lillian to deal with this, aren't we? Yes, let's, uh, let's head on out, do what we need to do, and hey, you're going to get some improved melee skill at the same time. Lillian, swing that great big sword of yours, please, and, and maybe David Chiller. Oh, hang on. Of course. That's right. We can't actually attack David while he's like this. We have to wait until he's chilled out and... <laughs> we have to rally him before we can do anything. So for now, Edith, Lillian, we'll just consider this a very stern warning. And the merchant is leaving. All right. Well, be gone. And that does mean that we shouldn't be getting any attacks from the Church of the Third Coming, at least for a little while. So we'll be looking out for the Sons of England and the other church, who, if we have a look at this, these are the, ah, the Kingdom of York, I see. Faithful Sons of England, right, that's the, the monarchy. Uh, they are hostile to us. Ah, uh, yes, the Circle of Avalon. They're the ones that hate us right now. I believe we are just, yeah, we're neutral with the Church of the Third Coming because of, well, us killing members of the Circle of Avalon. Swings and roundabouts, you know. Oh, look at that, and David is, uh... Okay, so David, we'll get you out here. Edith and Lillian, we'll get you out here as well. Lillian is ready and rearing to greet David as he's making his way back inside now. Edith is going to be joining. Mm hmm. Okay, well, David, I'm sorry, my friend. Your time is now at 86, Lillian. Oh my gosh. Well, a miss with that second strike there, but we can see just how much damage she can do with that blade. Granted, David wasn't armored, but even so, that is uh, impressive. They're going to be a little upset, but Lillian is also going to be happy that she, uh, she, she killed someone. Yeah. <laughs> Oh yes, and in terms of our research, we only have two more things to research, and that's kind of why I see us as reaching the end of this little series here in Hexham. Just Shields 3 and Distilling is left at this point. That will unlock a new workbench for us. 
the spirit distillery, which we are going to have to try and fit into here somehow. So we might also have to do some expansion down here. We'll just see. We'll let Jonathan finish his shelving project down here. Obviously, this is way more food than we could ever possibly need, especially since it's frozen most of the year. It doesn't degrade. And now we can actually preserve food as well. So we really don't need it. But, you know, let's live deliciously. Why not, eh? But I don't think we're going to start any other mining projects until we have this mined out. Once we've got that mined out, we're going to go and destroy this wall here. And that will be the main path that our enemies use to reach our base. I am going to start expanding it out just row by row once we've got this mined out. So yeah, we're going to have mining projects for a little while because while there is some dirt here, most of it is limestone and limestone does take us a while to get through. Well, that's the last of the shelving. So Jonathan has finished our pantry expansion and I'm really hoping that these have remembered. Yes, they have food and medicine. OK, great. So we don't need to look at changing that. I am leaving the door open at the moment uh, just so that uh, what's your name again? Lazyfoot, so that Lazyfoot can get down here. She is only 17% trained. I don't think that's going to be going up much further than that. Uh, Firefly, better though, 62%. And we are going to make sure that we keep you safe from our enemies so that you won't end up like your uh, poor mother. Edith, as always, is doing a great job at slowly but surely chipping out the walkway here. The thing is, we have so much limestone that we could really go wild with the walls. And I don't want to overdo it by any means, but I feel like we could make this feel a little bit more civilized and, and lived in. We might even end up just paving over this whole area once we've got it carved out a little bit more. We'll see. And we have yet another cow, Freki, a young cow. Okay, we could try and train you as well. Oh, you're both males. You're both bulls. Okay, well, I didn't realize that. I guess we're not going to be getting milk from Lazyfoot. So I think we'll probably just release you for now. There's no point in us slaughtering you. Just because, well, we've got so much meat already. We'll just let you roam free. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we'll let you out of here eventually, Lazyfoot. And happy birthday, Lilion, 27. And we've got some extra vinegar, unfortunately. No more mead, though. Well, hey, we've got some research available. Shields 3 or distilling at this point. I think we'll pick up Shields 3 because we're not quite ready for the distilling yet. And that will allow us to make the tower shield. So let's unlock it and see if we are going to be smithing that, if we're going to be making it over here. And it doesn't look like that's the case. So it's probably going to be wood. Ah, no, it's, it is done at the armorer's bench over here. Okay, so carpentry skill of 10, which I believe Jonathan does have. So let's go say do until we have. We'll just ask for maybe four of them, just in case we do end up wanting to use some shields. And the plate armor, I think we're just going to go and put a little bit further down along the line here. Unfortunately, it does take quite a bit of steel to make and steel is still hard for us to come by. What I am going to want to try and do is after we have finished digging this out a little bit is go and get some more iron from over at that iron vein. That or we just wait until we get attacked again and we melt down all of the bits of equipment that our enemies leave behind. I really hope that Edith knows what she's doing here. You aren't going to get yourself stuck, are you? That's precisely what you're going to do. Can you walk across here? No, you... Edith. <sighs> My gosh. All right, we're going to have to build a path over here. <laughs> and let's just say a wooden wall for now, because that shouldn't they shouldn't take too much. Uh, yep, sure. Keep on chipping that out for now. Jonathan, let's uh, get this made real quick. Actually, Jonathan can't do that interesting. Surely we can't be out of our wood already. That could be the case. Uh, you know what? I think maybe it is. Yeah, we must have used the rest of the wood to construct those shelves. All right, well, let's just, um, let's go rescue Edith, huh? And of course, this is a temporary measure, but it's a, it's a necessary one. And then we can just go and deconstruct that. 
Please do be careful. We're on to our last little bit of mining care with Edith. As soon as that's done, the next step for us is pretty much going to be to... Well, I was going to say, we could disassemble these, but I imagine if we just... If we hit remove, that might work as well. They take such a small amount of time to make, it's probably going to be easier for us to just deconstruct them one by one. Actually, I do wonder if we just destroy what's beneath it, if we would get them back. I, let's see. Let's see. As far as deconstruction work goes, this shouldn't take us all that long, except... Oh, yeah, no, you're going... That's a good route that you're taking there, Jonathan. I like that. We'll be deconstructing these stairs as well. And then the idea is that they have to walk along this drawbridge to get to our front gate. He can also deconstruct it from this way. Let's make sure that we're actually asking for those stairs to be deconstructed as well. And then things will be looking tidier. It actually doesn't look like we are getting the stick traps back from that. So might not have been the best plan to do it this way. But uh, it's certainly the fastest way for us to do it. And just like that, there it is. The gauntlet. And now we can kind of continue this gauntlet on somewhat. We could take it all the way down here like so and then have it kind of run around on a wee bit of a circuit. Something a little bit like, like this, yeah? Hmm. And then over here, because we do have this little ramp, we could look at just going for something like that and then just putting a, a door at the end so that we can make our way down from this side. And this side shouldn't be accessible anymore to our enemy. So let's go and just put a regular wooden door there. I think that should be fine because we are going to be bricking up that way. They shouldn't want to go that way. And then they'll just have to kind of go along this pathway here to be able to make it to the front. And they shouldn't be able to stand next to each other. At least that's, that's the idea. That's what I'm thinking here. I am a little bit tempted with this door to put a different kind of door in place, the greater door. We would need a few iron ingots to be able to do that. But what that would allow us to do is potentially have someone standing in here with a weapon that can actually reach through. You know what? We're going to put that there. Once we have enough ingots, we will look at, uh, yeah, seeing how that will work. But theoretically, we should be able to get Lilion, for example, to just stand behind there and attack through that grate whoever is actually at that front there and will have bolts raining down from above a beautiful thing oh and of course we will need to continue this wall along like so we can probably put a little bit of a roof across here oh we probably don't want to be working that square anymore um <laughs> yeah uh let's get rid of that birch tree and we'll be doing the same thing along here as well thankfully a lot of these squares here are just dirt so it's going to be really really easy for us to dig it out like that stuff there Edith is going to have no trouble getting that sorted and speaking of getting that sorted we have the wall complete now so we can have a look at just putting this very very basic roof atop that we go copy and then just drag it across uh, okay we can't go across there unless of course we put a beam across there yeah, we'll put a we'll put a block archway. Why not? We probably should have done like proper blocks across here just because it would look nicer. But, you know, here we are. And that will work as a archway for us. Good. The only thing that we'll need to consider here is we we do need a way to reach this side here so we can reach our limestone pile and whatnot. So we'll need to do something similar to what we've done with this door, but on the side. Honestly, we could probably just put a door in here. So we're just going to go for a reinforced door and we'll just plop it in there. We are going to need some iron ingots to be able to do that though. So while we do have this mining project set, we are going to have to uh, do some digging out over here. Unless of course, we, we could actually have some iron ingots just chilling out on the map and not Iron ingots, iron nuggets is what I was thinking of. And yeah, we do, iron nuggets. So if we just do this, do a little double click, there's 202 iron nuggets out here. Uh, that's quite a lot. That is quite a lot. Let's maybe just do a few of these. 17 over there. Yeah, we'll unforbid them so that we can chuck them into our forge. That way we don't have to worry about mining. It's just the run out here to grab them that's going to take a little bit. If only we had a David, eh? I am doing a little bit of a swap around here. We're getting Edith to jump back into smithing as much as possible. 
and we're getting Humphrey and Lillian to focus on the mining side of things. We are close to finishing off our research, I believe, with distilling, but we still need 15 theses. We're at six at the moment, so that's something that Lillian will be able to get back to, but once we've finished digging this out. And of course, we want Edith up here so that she is working on getting those iron uh, ingots cooked up. Oh, and it looks like we might actually already have... Yeah, okay. Well, that was super fast. Huh, good stuff. And that means that once we have finished digging this out here, we will still be able to access this side A-OK. -okay. You know what? I'm going to deconstruct these now. Uh, it just doesn't look nice, you know? It's got to look nice. And while, yeah, that is going to fall apart, we are going to be able to build that again really quickly. But this time we're going to do it with the proper blocks. There we go, all set to be constructed. I also think that we aren't going to want to tile this pathway because looking at everything here, there is a traversal speed. Grass and everything else here seems to be 85%, whereas the basic kind of limestone pathing, or well, this is the brick stuff, that's 110 traversal speed. And this here is 94. Yeah, so we can actually keep our enemies slower if we don't put anything down on this pathway. In actual fact, I wonder if we could grow stuff, if that would make it even harder to traverse. 60% on here at the moment. 100% on rocky soil. I don't think we can grow on limestone, so that won't work for us, but theoretically, along these sections, we might be able to put some grass down, which would actually slow our enemy. I'm going to consider it. I don't think you can plant tall grass as it is, but you can plant flax and 75%. I mean, it's not that much of a reduction. I don't think it's going to make that much of a difference. But it's an interesting thought though, isn't it? And I can safely say that this is looking a lot better. A much more pleasing design. Well, I have no idea how this happened. We've got bones on the roof. No idea at all how it ended up there, but yep, it's just hanging up in the roof there somewhere. Maybe we had rats? I don't know. We've very nearly got this maze dug out. It's pretty much been Humphrey and Lillian going the, the whole way here. Uh, down here, we've got Jonathan working on chopping down a whole heap of these pine trees, which that's going to be more than enough wood for us for the winter, I think. Let's just see. Yeah, 500 wood just in this area alone. So I think we're going to be nice and toasty. Ah, oh, Edith! Brilliant! Firefly has been successfully tamed. So what we're going to allow Firefly to do now is haul. And we are going to assign you to Edith. Um, that's good. That's great. And now, now Firefly can pretty much go anywhere around here. I'm pretty sure I've locked this up. Oh, we haven't yet. So let's go and set that to be closed. When Firefly is hungry, she should be able to just run straight in there and get food from now on. Because she's effectively treated like a colonist. Oh yeah, and look at that, it is done. Our maze walkway is done. <laughs> I cannot wait to try this out. I think we can safely say that we are just, you know, abundant when it comes to food. We've got 123 lavish meals now, and those are all, you know, the human kind. So <laughs> we're doing well. So because we've got so many as well, I think we're going to... And because we've got so many, I think we're going to swap back onto the diet so that they're just going to eat those lavish meals going forwards. And if I see them getting hungry, then that means that we need to, you know, vary things up again. Because otherwise, they just seem to immediately go for raw meat whenever they can get it. Bloody vampires, eh? Literally. Yes, I, I think it's safe to say that it's going to be more than enough wood. Uh, yep. 1300 wood it's gonna take a while to move that back inside and we have unlocked the last bit of research distilling done and so i think that's gonna mean lilion you are going to be hauling primarily at the moment we're gonna take you off research you don't need to be doing any more research at the stage actually let's just make it yeah priority four and we'll just reset you uh yeah primarily she's just gonna be hauling stuff around for us and we need a fair amount of that done at the moment. We need refueling done. There's there's lots of stuff that needs to uh, get organized. But speaking of organizing, we do actually need somewhere for the distillery to go. So we are going to have to have a look at expanding our kitchen out a little further. Alternatively, we could try and fit it in the workshop, which it totally can fit within. 
we need a fair few iron ingots and we do need some limestone bricks before we are actually able to get there. You know what? Ooh, is that footprint too big? No, no, it's 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 fine. It's not as big as it actually is. And if it turns out to be absolutely massive, then we can look at moving it somewhere else. Actually, you know what? It is going to be butted right up against our Boia table here. So yeah, no, we want that to go somewhere else. I guess we could always just dig out here so we could have a little fermenting station nook. I think it needs to be 3D. Yeah, it's three by three. And of course we will have to remove these wall hangings for the time being. And of course, because this is above the pantry, I am gonna have to be filling it in as we go. As we don't, I was gonna say, want to expose the pantry to any heat, but I don't think that's gonna be a problem at the moment as it is now a cold snap. And in what feels like record time, Edith has already got this area mined out for us. We need to find our furniture and get it back on the walls now. Put a wall torch there and the pottery shelf. Yeah, let's get that as it will actually make this whole area a kitchen once again. And then finally, the spirit distillery. We're going to be fitting in right there. It says it cannot be placed there. That's a lie. It'll be fine. It just needs resources to actually uh, work. Although th there is a small chance that it might actually need to be outside. I mean, it has a pretty massive heat output. I think it'll be okay. Yeah. It'll just be a while before we get it built because we, for one, need to carve up some more limestone blocks. And two, we're going to need some more iron ingots. And oh boy, Edith. Yeah, speaking of the iron, <laughs> that is an issue. She was heading out here to try and bring in these iron nuggets. We're actually going to forbid those now. I think that's the last of the ones that she was grabbing. Uh, but we're going to need Lillian to come out here and save Edith from the cold. We can see right now that she has moderate hypothermia, which is why she's unconscious right now. Actually, let's just, yep, nope, we cannot do anything. Okay, Lillian, get here quick, please. We can see her racing up towards Edith at the moment. Let's grab her and go. This is the cold snap. It's, uh, it's not kind. And of course, Lillian is also going to be suffering from the cold. So we, <laughs> we need to hope that she is going to make it back before she kind of succumbs to the hypothermia. There we go, safe and sound. Well, the cold snap is over. Unfortunately, Edith was recovering outside here, so we're gonna kind of destroy that bed just so we don't take people there in the future, as it's more than a little dangerous. And as you can see, the snow disappeared for like a second. It's back again now. The temperature is low outside, but it's nowhere near as low as it was. And I, I don't think we're in danger of getting attacked during winter. I can't remember a single time that we have been attacked while there's been snow on the ground. Most people want to hunker down during winter, so I think we're pretty much going to be doing the same. Just hanging out, improving our craft while we're here and, and waiting for those inevitable sieges come spring. And I have made a decision here that come summertime should be a little bit more visible, but we are going to be putting limestone floor across this whole area out here, leaving this little kind of garden strip towards the edge though. One of the reasons being we've just got a lot of limestone and I would like to start to use it. And it's a Jonathan birthday today, 31. Well, it's not a siege, but it is a merchant caravan. And well, I'm pretty sure that these folks are going to make their way up here towards this. We might be able to get away with locking this door, but I think at this stage Edith is outside the walls. We aren't going to let this merchant caravan get away. No siree. I mean, yeah, they are from the Church of the Third Coming, and there is a, another Jonathan that's with them, but we're not going to pass up this opportunity. Edith is ahead of the group, so we should be able to lock down that door after she gets back inside. And there she goes. Okay, so let's mark that as locked. And someone should come along and lock that quick fast. Or maybe not, so we'll just get Humphrey to prioritize locking that. And we'll see, yeah, if we can get this caravan to just follow along this route. Let's go and lock this as well. And so I imagine they will come up and along this way all the way along to here and they won't be able to make it any further. At least that's the hope. We are going to let our gang sleep in. Um, okay, or, or they'll just go there and then they will not go any further, huh? Oh no, no, here we go. Yeah, that's it. Just through the maze, little ones. Come on. 
I, I think it's because they don't see a path to reach one of these. So we might have to unlock this. Yeah. Okay, everybody has woken up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get these three to pop on up here. And we are going to get Lelion to come and uh, unlock that door for now. Yeah, that'll, that'll be the plan. And then we're just going to have her hang out right there and just wait. And we'll see. We'll see if they want to come up and play and it looks like oh yes they are entering the maze <laughs> fantastic okay all of you let's get ready eh all right in position and they'll be nice and warm with those braziers there as well and we're just gonna let them get nice and close before we lock that gate yeah okay a little bit further all right now Let's get you to lock this again. Prioritize locking it. There we go. It's now locked. Let's get you to stand right in between here. Like so. And you three, we are going to start attacking Jonathan, the merchant. Oh, wow. Yeah, that works. That works. My gosh. Look at that. And look at all of that stuff. Okay, so Douglas is taking a shot at Lillian. I kind of didn't think about that. So let's just pull her back for now and see if they want to continue on. It looks like they do. Okay, good. And now is when we see if we can get this to work or not. Lillian, let's get you over here. Firefly, I really don't want you going outside right now. Can you attack through this door? Let's see if that's going to be possible or not. Ah, this weapon cannot damage the target, so we are going to need like a proper spear. I figured a two-handed weapon might be okay, but yeah, let's let's go grab something. Let's get a reinforced spear, that sounds good to me. As for our archers, are we looking at taking any shots from up here? I oh the, yep, yep, no, we most certainly are. We just had to we just had to tell them to start taking a shot. Oh, this is good. Yep, good damage. And the door is holding. It's now being treated as a proper incursion, it seems. So I think they're just going to keep on shooting. We shouldn't have to tell them to do any of that. Okay, Lilion, come on. Get to that position, please. If you would be so kind. And we also just got to hope that Douglas isn't going to start to pepper her too much. There we go. That's it, Lilion. <laughs> okay, Redwin is making their way up now. And Lilion can just poke them through the gate here. Good stuff. Very good stuff. Let's start to try and target Douglas because, uh, yeah, oh, <laughs> he was the real danger. Uh, but now that, that danger is over. Um, we can just focus on the others back here. This is holding pretty well against their attacks. I don't think that they're actually going to get through here. And everyone else up the top. Let's see. They're kind of waiting to take a shot, aren't they? Let's, let's take a good shot at Arlo. Ooh, okay. Seems like... Arlo's shield worked. Lilian's taken out another. Gerald is going to be next. A few shots going towards Arlo, and that'll do it. Okay, they're starting to flee. They're going to try. Let's do a little bit of that. And Lilian, we're going to get you to unlock this door real quick. Okay, the door is unlocked. Let's go tell you to attack Gerald. And Gerald is dead. Hey, team. Good job excellent work so obviously we have a very large amount of resources for us to have a look at here uh this bill hook looks really nice it this stuff's made out of gold so uh yeah it, superior two-handed warhammer yeah i'm looking at the damage at the moment um i think we'll probably just stick with the spear that we've got because uh yeah, it's working for Lilion to be able to, to get those attacks through there. We'll get that door repaired. And you might also be able to see that, uh, well, this has been pretty well carpeted with snow. But beneath that snow, we have our limestone flooring going right up until this point. Or at least that's going to be the plan. We still have a little bit more work to do there. And so we're going to let time continue rolling on by while we work on these projects and sort through all those new goodies. We've got a few decorations that we've picked up from the caravan here so we're gonna make sure that we get those installed well it took ages but jonathan has got this area entirely paved over i think at this stage we might want to extend our wall around here just for aesthetic reasons if nothing else well yet again it's taken a bit to get it done but we have a proper outer wall it stretches the whole way across now and it is made out of limestone block so it's going to be nice and sturdy unfortunately you can't 
exactly get the roofs to line up well when you're kind of combining these sides. It's easy to make the walls fit, but there isn't a good fit from what I've seen for kind of corner pieces. There's lots of different options for rooftops and whatnot, but just, yeah, that's probably the closest you'd get, but it doesn't quite look right, does it? I think we're probably going to give that a go though. Yeah, that does look a little bit better doing it that way. And with that finished now, we're actually in spring, day one of spring. So I hope we'll start to see some sieges soon as I'm really wanting to test out our amazing maze. Oh, look at this. We're actually crafting plate armor now. Okay, you know what? We're actually going to move this up in the order because I want Edith to continue working on this. Having a few bits of plate in stock would go down nicely. Oh, wow. Okay, the timing of that. The Ravagers are here. They weren't just hungry, they were greedy. The Ravagers were already imagining a tasty feast with human flesh as the main course. With human flesh as the main course. They say meat is murder and this could be yours. Finally, finally the Ravagers. Okay, so this is the cannibalistic clan and you know, I feel like they've probably heard a lot about us, both good and bad. And Damn, look at Jeffrey and Lambert here, dripped out in some golden plate. At least it looks like it is. Let's see. Uh, no, that's bone armor. I didn't realize we could make bone armor. The armor rating is terrible though, so <laughs> I don't think it's going to help them that much. Nevertheless, we need to prepare. And the first thing that we need to do is have a look at building this uh, temporary wall. So it is just a limestone wall, like so. And Jonathan is our fastest constructor, so we'll send him down to construct that. Lilion, we're going to get you set right there. And the others, we're going to get them up onto the wall ASAP. Jonathan is going to grab the limestone from all the way over there. I don't know why. We have enough there. Ah, <sighs> It should be okay. It should be okay. All right. Here we go. Oh no, don't do that. Jonathan, why would you do such a thing? Okay, he can move back inside. That's good. Work on it from you fool, you absolute fool. Of course he's going to do this, isn't he? Well, you you best hope that you can make it back inside in time. Ah, he's going to be he's going to be fine. Yep. Yep. In you go, you dummy. And we're going to get you situated up the top there, Humphrey. You're in position. Firefly is still running around outside. I'm not actually super happy about that. Let's take you off hauling and hope that you just decide to chill out. Having a look at our enemies, they are making their way across now. Who's that in the front? Aldebert. Okay, so you're gonna be the first one for us to take down. And we just need to hope that this is working as intended, that they are actually going to travel along the correct path. And right now, it looks like they are. It looks like they're going to be heading right for this here. It's either that or they're going to start to go for this door. And if they stop here, even for a second, we need to take action. Nope. <laughs> They are entering the maze. Ah, uh, well, kind of, kind of. Ah, uh, that's not great. Okay, so if they do attack down that door, it's going to do nothing for them because they are going to have to go through all of that. Aldebart is getting attacked now. And the second he gets up towards the door, Lilion should be able to, yeah, finish off that fearsome marauder. Probably should have done a, a more robust door there, but you know what? Maybe they're not interested in that. I don't think they are. I think it was just a destructible thing. Yup, into the maze. There they go. Okay, Lambert, you are leading the charge. Okay. Oh, Cuthbold, you're all the way back there with a bow, but you're not going to be able to do much either. Oh, those first few shots are great. And then by the time they reach here, Lilion is able to make pretty quick work of them. Cuthbold, I think, is trying to take some shots at Lilion, which is... Uh, hmm. Okay, no, nope, she's fine. She is absolutely fine. Uh, well, I say that there's quite a few archers there, but you know, she is holding. <laughs> she's taking down Jeffrey, the other bone armored wielding, wearing foe. She's getting a little injured. Okay, okay. Oh boy. I was about to pull her back then because uh, that was getting a little too close for comfort. Edith was indeed the bravest, dealing the most damage. Lilion, though, most certainly took the most damage there. And we're going to uh, immediately get her back inside. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just until they finish shooting. And then, yeah, no, we're not going to catch them. They're archers. They're going to be long gone. Lilion, you get to rest. And the rest of you, 
the same deal there. Oh boy, what a time. Oh, and I think she's going to chase after them no matter what. There we go, she's heading back now. And so, we are going to claim all of this for our own, because we bloody well earned it. And I feel like that was a very successful defense. It seems like they're going to destroy this door, no matter what. And... Yeah, it is a little dangerous for Lillian here, so we probably want to make sure that she's wearing plate in the future if we can get her wearing plate. As soon as Edith is done with that first set, we'll make sure that we get her decked out in it. But that was certainly a successful siege. We can look at uh, dismantling this piece here. I suppose they are going to destroy this no matter what, so we, we might as well just make it a wooden door. Make them feel like they're actually doing something over there. I guess the other thing we could do here is just very quickly build a wall here rather than there. That might be the right thing to do. So let's just look at keeping this little stockpile of limestone over there instead. I should note that Lillian didn't actually have any injuries from that, wildly enough. It was just her hit points that went down, so I think her armor stopped her from bleeding through much of that damage. And I forgot to show you, but the distillery is built. We now have everything we could possibly need here in the way of workbenches. Not that I think we will be distilling anything anytime soon, but we have reached the technological peak that you can get in Going Medieval. And so with that, I think we're going to hold out for one more good siege, and then we'll be leaving Hexham for a time. That does mean it'll be the end of these weekly episodes, but if there is a big content update in the future for Going Medieval, I would love to revisit Hexham and these four cannibalistic colonists. But yes, I still want one last hurrah. So we'll see who ends up wandering our way. Oh wow, there's the plate there. We can see that the armor rating is massive. So Lillian, I would love for you to equip that. The reason why she hasn't automatically equipped it is she already has pretty good armor on. It's nowhere near as good as the plate is, but she sees it as being good enough as in it's fine quality and it's not damaged. But that, oh, that is just so much better. And I believe that should also have our emblem on it. And it does. Looking fierce. <laughs> and who knows? We've got maybe one last chance here. Walter, we are going to welcome you into Hexham. It does sound like he's been in a bit of trouble, but what do you got for us, my friend? What do you got? A deep leg laceration and a few things, but unfortunately not a cannibal. A churl. Mean and surly barely even civil hard to work with and harder still to befriend elf shot as well caused by fairy arrows interesting he's disfigured he's heat resistant and he's a green thumb unfortunately none of the things that we are needing yeah walter you're probably gonna bite the bullet right away because i don't think anyone is chasing after him and so we're going to get him to march out the front here, and uh, Lillian is going to do the honors. Oh, okay, here he is with this deep laceration. Lillian, let's just get you over here. I know you are just using your spear. It's not going to be as good, but it should be good enough. Yep, that skill's getting higher. Another strike. There we are, and we'll finish the poor sod off, eh? There we go. Done and dusted. You might notice that we have some nice treats along the pathway now for our foes. These metal traps will really slow them down, making it so much harder for them to actually reach the uh, gate front here. I am salivating as we wait for our next foes. Not because they're cannibals, of course, but because I'm excited to see how our defensive structure plays out. And I'm really hoping for the Sons of England or something like that, because, you know, Siege weapons would be interesting to see as well, if they will actually be able to do anything to our walls here. Oh, <laughs> and just like that, a lone traveler. Well, hmm, from the Circle of Avalon, I think it's probably worth us provoking you, hey? Yeah. Well, we'll let you come to us first and then we will um, do what we do. And of course, because they are a merchant, they'll be able to wander straight on up here. Well, here we go. I think that should do it. Let's say attack. <laughs> and it was just over so quickly. Well, they, they don't miss. They're getting much better with those crossbows and the Circle of Avalon is now not very happy with us. Ah, 
Okay, here we are. Salvation, the Church, the Third Coming. Whether it was the Third Coming seeking a poor sinner to make an example of or some other zealots, it's unclear. Edward raved about religion, torture, and escape. The details were confused. Would we give him refuge? Danger might ensue. That's the danger that we have been looking for. Edward Bricks, we will welcome you for now. Let's have a look at you then. We've got 21 hours until the search party arrives, and you, unfortunately... <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to have a good time here. You're hot-blooded, you're wise, and a swigger. Well, Edward, you are going to stand your ground with spear in hand, taking Lilion's position when the siege ensues. We're going to have her behind here in case he should fall. And of course, if he doesn't fall, we'll be sure to make use of him afterwards, won't we? And here they are. The violent extortionists from the Church of the Third Coming. These zealots are here demanding that we relinquish Edward. He is to be burned at the stake, or possibly flayed alive, for his manifold sins. God's will should be done. They were authorized to kill. And I imagine that they are not here just for Edward, but they are here for these vampiric creatures that dwell within the mountain. And so, we are not going to bow to their demands. We are going to make ready for battle. And so, let's see. <laughs> I feel like that is probably the biggest. 14 enemies. Uh, how is that armor looking? I'm not seeing any plate. Well, well, I think we're going to make quick work of them. Uh, right now, they are positioned up here. So they are going to have to make their way all the way around uh, and it's going to take them a while to get there so that should give us the opportunity to build a wall in front of there that's the hopes so let's start to get everyone into position oh and look at this edward who they are here for is already outside of the wall so edward we are going to get you to prioritize working on that and I guess you'll make up your mind which side you want to make it on. All right, they are all rushing into position as I speak. Lilion is going to be down here, but she is going to be back up because uh, our lad over here, Edward, he is going to be the one that is standing at the front. It looks like he wants to build it from down here, which, you know, good for him, I suppose. But that now has made it clear that there is only one way forward. And he is currently heading that way. Okay, here they come. Some of the archers that are up there, they will be able to take a few shots at Edward along the way. We'll see. Oh, oh no, he's turning tail. No, Edward, get here. All right, he is traversing the maze as I speak. We'll see if anyone gets any pot shots off. Oh, he evaded. Keep on running, Edward. Oh, unlucky for you, good sir. Yeah looks like they might take you out or oh, he's trying his best just a little further and you'll be outside of their range don't set off any of the traps now it looks like they can shoot pretty much right up to here which is dangerous but there we go you made it inside and uh firefly let's make sure that we take you off of hauling so that you too can head back inside and hopefully stay there obviously edward is gonna die pretty quickly just waiting here but we got to give them something, right? We got to entice them. And I think this, <laughs> this is the way to do it. And oh boy, I didn't realize exactly how far they had to go to be able to get down to the next level now, but they have to go all the way over here. So they are going to be a little bit more spread out. It does work for us though, because even the archers are going to have to traverse this long trail. It looks like Will is the one that's in front this marauder here. We should be able to make pretty quick work of Will. I guess unsurprisingly, the next few are actually archers because the archers tend to wear lighter equipment in this, meaning they can actually run a whole heap faster. There's our marauder. Will is making his way up towards the traps. He's gonna start slowing down at this point. And I think, well, it doesn't look like we have range just yet. Oh no, I think, yeah, our range starts around about here. Okay, so some of the others are going to catch up. That's all right. Athelmund, the archer, 
is making his way closer, and that's not going to be great for Edward. <laughs> oh, in a misfire. That didn't work. We are going to be able to start shooting Will, though, I believe. And, yep, there we go. Will is dead. They're going to start reloading, getting ready for the next shot to come through. And most of the archers just seem to be kind of hanging out here. So, yeah. Once we can bait in some of the others, we might have to pull Edward back. But really, I'm wanting Edward to be on the front line here because uh, he can still attack through here, I believe. He has a Bardish in his hand. Oh, Cuthbert just cut down. Oswald and Alfred, they're next on the uh, chopping block there. And <laughs> their archers, rather comfortable. But Edward, striking back. My gosh, sir, you're doing a good job. Or rather, you're trying, and I suppose that's the main thing. Oh, Oswald is dead. Uh, Seward is just kind of hanging back there. And hey, I think Edward actually got that kill there. Looks like they have a little bit more of an opening to try and shoot him. But then, as soon as some of their friends get in front, they seem to be a little bit um, more anxious about taking shots this way. Osgood, a little damage there. Good work, Edward. I think he... Oh, I was going to say he's the only one that's striking them, but no, no, we've got a perfect arc to hit with the crossbows from up there as well. Grimbold doesn't really stand much of a chance at all. And really... Yeah, they can't even hang out here for all that long. They have actually done a decent amount of damage to the door. Oh, and there's Edward. Very hurt. He's going to be unconscious. And, well, one more shot. Lionette is dead. We've really reduced their numbers down. We've got a wolf just hanging out here. Margaria is valiantly trying to charge towards Edward and the wall. Are you going to make it? No. No, you are not. And Edward is dead. One of the archer's shots lands true. I believe we only have one other melee fighter. And here we go. Okay, 10 sworn enemies died during the fight. Edward Brooks died as well. He will not exactly be missed. But Jonathan Withers was the bravest of the settlers dealing the most damage to our enemies this day. So we're not obviously going to let them just get away so easily. Lelion, let's get you out there right now going after Baldwin because he's gonna he's gonna charge off any moment now. Oh interesting. Um, can you strike across there? I don't think you can. <laughs> Not that you need to. And those archers are going to live. Athelmund and Ogden will spread word of the cannibal keep of Hexham. Because for now, the keep still stands. And yeah, we, we lost a person during that siege, but we were going to lose him regardless. Down here, clad in plate mail, Lelion is a staunch defender. And up on the ramparts, Humphrey, Edith, and Jonathan are absolutely deadly with those crossbows. Jonathan, specifically with that heavy crossbow, is able to do significant damage to our enemies, even if they're wearing heavy armor. And of course, none of this would be possible without the sweet dog that is Firefly. And so, it is with that siege that we are going to be drawing an end to this series, an end to our window into Hexam, into the lives of these four cannibal colonists. Now I truly hope that this isn't going to be the last that we see of Hexam, but at this stage we have experienced a large breadth of what Going Medieval is able to provide for us. The game is still in early access, however, so I'm looking forward to see the changes that they bring in time. And I suppose at the end of the day, we did answer the question of whether or not three cannibals could survive in the mountains by themselves. Their influence now spreads throughout the region, and no doubt their legend will spread further still. And so it is, for now, I shall be saying farewell. You shall all be graced with a brand new RimWorld series starting next Thursday. And as soon as there is more to Going Medieval, I shall be sure to return. And so, for one final time, I ask you all, if you enjoyed today's episode, please consider leaving a comment or a like to let me know if you enjoyed the show. For now... I have been Rikon. You have all been awesome, 
And until next time, stay tuned. And finally, I'd like to extend a great big thank you to the Legion on Patreon who have made this cannibalistic content possible. Here's to the folk of Hexham.